This lesson has a little bit of review and some new stuff. Uh, first thing that we're going to talk about is what's um, parallel lines. And if you remember, those are two lines that do not intersect. Um, here we define them as two lines on the same plane that don't intersect. Okay, And usually what you'll see um, on parallel lines, there'll be some type of little arrow in here to indicate that these lines are parallel. So that would be the symbol for parallel on the diagram. Um, if I mean these, I don't know, let's call this line N and line P. Okay. Um, if I, the written form would say line L, or excuse me, line N is parallel to line P. Okay. This right here is the symbol for parallel. Okay. Uh, the next um, type of lines that you should be familiar with, uh, if you have a line here, we'll stick to our line N, and then we have a line coming this way that crosses, we'll call this um, line, I don't know, we'll call it Q. Okay. The next word is perpendicular. Now, if it's perpendicular, you'll see a little box right here, like that to mean perpendicular. So I would say line N is perpendicular to line Q. Um, in symbol notation, if we write it out, um, you'll say line Q. The symbol, remember, we talked about this before, is this capital upside down T. Now, the other words that we've talked about, or the word that we haven't talked about, is what's called skew. Now, for skew, you want to think 3D. Because what that means, a skew lines, or skew lines, mean that the lines are not parallel, but they do not intersect. Okay, so you want to think something like this. You'll have a cube, or some type of three-dimensional, I don't know, prism. And so this will be 3D, and so um, this line here is on a different plane than this line right here. Okay. okay, so here's my cube, and if I pick a line, say I pick this line like we did back here in the drawing, and then this line right here in front, all right, they're not going to ever intersect but they're not parallel either. They're not going in the same direction. Okay, so if I turn it this way, see, I can turn it in any direction. So I have two lines that are on two separate planes. Okay, so I don't remember skew lines, that means that they do not intersect and they're not parallel. Remember that they're 3D, they have to be on two separate planes. Okay, so example one says, think of each segment in the figure as part of a line. Which lines or planes appear to fit the description? Uh, a says lines parallel to line CD containing point A. B, lines skew to CD to line CD containing point A. C says lines perpendicular to line CD containing point A. And D says planes parallel to plane EFG containing point A. All right, so uh, this part A, parallel containing point A. So line CD is going this direction. Um, so the one that contains A would be this line right here, AB. Okay, so that would be line AB. There are other lines that are also parallel, like this line EF would be parallel, but it doesn't contain point A. Another example would be GH, line GH would be parallel, because they're going to be going in the same direction. Okay. Um, line skew to CD containing point A. Skew, remember, means on a different plane. So line AB would be part of this plane up here. So that would not work. Um, the line that would be skew would be this one up here, AH. That would be an example. You could also use this line right here, AG, since it's going slanted. It would not be parallel. 
and it would not be intersecting. So we have this one has two. Okay, uh, perpendicular to CD containing point A. Okay, so that's going to be this little. Remember these little red squares here. That's the symbol for a right angle, which is how we define perpendicular. So for this one, we would have line AD. That one would be perpendicular. That goes through point A. Um, then we have planes parallel to plane EFG. So here's my plane EFG. That's actually going to be this bottom plane right here. So parallel, that's going to be this top plane up here. That's going to be parallel. Um, and we can use any of three out of the four letters. So we can say our points A, D, C, or B. So I don't know, we would just say plane. Any of the combination would work. So we'll just do A, B, C. Next we have the parallel postulate. And that just simply says that if there's a line and a point that's not on the line, then there's exactly one line, or there's only going to be one line that goes through point through that point that's parallel to this line. So in the picture here, um, point P is not on line L. So there's only one line that I can draw or make that's going to go through that point P and be parallel to line L. All right, next is the perpendicular postulate. And it says that if there's a line and a point not on that line, then there's exactly one line through the point perpendicular to the given line. So like in this drawing here, you have line L. And again, you have point P that's not on line L. And that this postulate says that there's only one line that I can draw that goes through point P and is perpendicular to line L. All right, next we have example number two. It says the given line markings show how the roads in the town are related to one another. Part A says name a pair of parallel lines. B says name a pair of perpendicular lines. And C says is line FE parallel to line AC. And then we want to explain. Okay, so again, parallel lines, um, looking at this diagram, I see these arrows right here. That tells me that's the symbol on the diagram that lines are parallel. So for my parallel lines, I would say line AD, it would be parallel to line FE. Okay. And there's not anything else that is that I'm told. I cannot assume that this line right here, this, these two lines, CE and BF, I can't assume that they're parallel. Um, name a pair of perpendicular lines. Again, that's what this little box right here means, a little square. So this line right here, it has three points, so I just need two of those three points. I'm just going to call it um, um, BF, I guess. We'll call it line BF. Okay. And because of that box, it knows it's perpendicular to this line AD. Okay. There's not anything else. There's not any other right angles that are given to me. So again, I cannot assume that this is perpendicular. I can't assume that this is a right angle or that that's a right angle. Um, then the next question says is line FE, which is this line right here, is that parallel to line AC? And then so the answer would be no, because um, I have a line AD, and I know it's parallel to EF, or FE, or whatever you want to call it. And this point M is part of this line AD. And according to the postulate, there's only one line that I can make that's on that, that goes through point M that's parallel to this line FE. And since line AD is parallel to this line FE, I know this line AC cannot be parallel to line FE. All 
All right, next we have these uh, four vocabulary words, or actually five. You have a transversal, and a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. Uh, so that's going to be, um, you have two lines, or you have, yeah, you have two lines here, um, and then you have a, a third line that connects, or that, excuse me, that crosses, intersects the other two lines. Okay, so these would be my two lines. This one that crosses, that touches both of them, that would be, the, that's what's called the transversal. Right, the next four vocabulary words, you're going to need to know these. You need to draw them and write this down. Uh, corresponding angles. The angles are corresponding when they have the same position. So, for example, two, angle 2 and angle 6 would be a pair of corresponding angles. Next, you have alternate interior angles. That's two angles that are, on the, are in between the two lines, as you can see in the picture. Then you have alternate exterior angles. And you have what's called consecutive interior angles. Make sure you write these down. All right, so now let's look at an example so I can explain and kind of show you the different angle pairs that we can have. Example 3 says identify all pairs of angles of the given type. A is corresponding. Example 3B, alternate interior. Example 3C is alternate exterior. And example 3D is consecutive interior. Okay. Now, so corresponding means that they're in the same relative position. Um, so, here's my transversal. That's my line T. Okay. So, for example, angle 1 is above the transversal, and it's also to the left of this line right here. Okay. So, the other corresponding angle, I'm looking for it to be above the transversal, so that would mean like 5 or 6. And then it's on the left side of this other line right here. So that's going to be angle 5. Right, so it would be angle 1 and angle 5 would be corresponding. Then if I stay above the transversal and I go to the right side, that would be angle 2. Okay, And then it's on the right side of, of this line. It's going kind of up and down. So then that would be angle 6, because it's on the right side of its line. So 2 and 6 would be corresponding. Um, then we would have, we'd go down below the transversal, so it's angle 3 and angle 7. And then so that would leave also, we would have angle 4 would be corresponding to angle 8. Okay. Now, alternate interior means that it's going to be inside the two lines that the transversal is intersecting. So, that would tell me I have 2, 4, 5, and 7. Those are in the interior of these lines. So, alternating, so once 2 is above, angle 2 is above the transversal, and angle 7 is below. So, that's what we mean by alternating. One's on top, one's below. So, that would be angle 2 would be an alternate interior to angle 7, and then angle 4, and angle 5. Those would be alternate interior as well, because 4 is below the transversal, and 5 is above the transversal. Okay, what we mean by alternate exterior, same idea, I'm alternating, so one's going to be above the transversal, one's going to be below the transversal, only this time I'm going to be on the outside of the, two, of the other two lines. So that's going to tell me angle 1 and angle 8. And then the other pair would be angle 3 and angle 6. Okay. Now we have this last um, example, 3D, says consecutive interior. That's going to be that they're on the same side of the transversal. So they're either both going to be above, in this example they're both going to be above, or they're both going to be below. So that would tell me angle 2 and angle 5 would be consecutive interior. And so you can think of them as angle 2 and angle 5, you can think of them as kind of facing each other. Um, then we would also have angle 4 and angle 7. Those are both on the inside and they're on the same side of the transversal. So that would be angle 4 and angle 7. 